Okay, let's all stand. Let's all stand. Thank you so much, man of God. Let's all stand. Lust. Lust. Some of you guys right here right now have you're thinking about stuff you shouldn't be thinking about right now. Just standing here, I'm just standing here like I bet you there's some of you that even came to this. I used to do this like way back. Like it looks like some cute girl shirt, sure, so I'm gonna get super dressed up just her. I did that, yeah, I did that. This is a lust. Alright, so let's pray real quick and then we're gonna go over lust. Father, you're the amazing God and we just thank you for who you are. And we ask you that today, this start of this series, Father God, overcome the lust series that we learn from it, Father God. You know exactly what it needs to be done. Teach us how to overcome this dreadful thing, Father God, Father God, called us, Father God. Let us overcome. Every time we get put in this situation, Father God, give us the right choices to make, Father God. For you know exactly what it's done. Jesus said, everybody said it. Or you know somebody in this room that right now you have a stepfather or a stepmother because someone was unfaithful in their parental, like as parents, they were unfaithful to someone. Come on, I, I know you know somebody that, man, that he has a stepfather because mom cheated on, on whoever. And this is serious. We're talking about lust, and this is how far it's all here. Verse 1. If you keep yourself pure. That's okay. I've been, I've been ministering about almost 20 years. I've seen people take the right, take the right way, and I see people take the don't worry about it. It's not your fault. I have to tell them that. I've seen I, today I've seen some of my youth living with people they're not even married. I've seen people take on relationships. That guy's not even Christian. And I'm like, you know, I just teach you, I've taught you all this. Right. And now that you graduated from high school and you, you can be you can date whoever you want to date, all of a sudden, all the teachings that I've taught you went out the door. Okay, it's not your fault. You know what the what scripture says? If you, not us, not if we pass the game, I'll be honest with my wife, if we stay pure, if you stay pure, if you stay pure, not me, if you stay pure, watch what happens. It says, if you stay pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. I like that. Your life will be clean and you will be ready for the mess. I'm not old, yes, 30 years. That I haven't talked to you. Hit me up on Facebook. Anthony, can you call me right now? I need prayer. This morning, my brother calls me, I mean, texts me out of nowhere. Anthony, I need prayer. And I didn't think about this scripture until then. One of them, low key, I was a little jealous about. And I haven't spoken to this person in 30 years. But I was like jealous because back in my day, when I was when I was in this crew, I was in this crew. He started posting, like, and I, I would look at his Facebook, and I look at his thing, and he was like, one day, because you stay pure, it's going to call you up when spiritual needs needs to happen. That you will be used in special moments just like that. That you'll be used, you know what, they ain't calling me when we want to go get choked up. Uh -uh. Because they know I live a pure life. They're calling me. Not because, oh, he's a pastor, and that's who he's mean to call. No, no, he don't even know I'm a pastor. They're calling me because I live that pure life. And one day, someone's going to call you and be used. You're going to be used for honorable use. Isn't that honorable use? Right? Amen? Stay pure. Go ahead, buddy. So, next part of the scripture says, run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Instead, pure, instead, pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. Right now, we're going to go over three ways youthful lust comes at you. Three ways that stimulate youthful lust. It goes out. You can call it either way. Three ways or three things that stimulate youthful lust. Number one. Mentally, mentally, the enemy will come at you. Lust starts in the mind. Everything that we start to think about, fellas and ladies these days, 
It all starts right here. Yo, bro. You see what she was wearing? Bro. Hey, girl. You see Zach in front? Oh, my God. He had his shirt off, bro. <laughs> I don't know what you, I don't know. Who's the, who's the new actress today? I don't know. I was thinking Mark Brock, right? I have a sister, yes. And I know that she's really pretty. I know. I know this. I don't care, but I know this. She's really pretty. You know how I know? Because all back through high school, all through my college time, all my friends, all they would ever talk about is my sister. Bro, your sister's hot. Why are you telling me she's hot? I don't care, she's hot. Bro, she's a cheerleader, bro. When she wears her outfit, I don't care. Bro, your sister Judy, if you just give me your phone number. No! I have my friends calling my house asking for my sister. I go, oh, hold up. You're my homie. You forget it, man. Don't call me no more. Don't call my house no more. You know, I'm going to teach you guys something. Now, I know my, my sister's pretty. I know she got features that guys want. But have I ever looked at my sister lustfully? Christian, I see what you did last night. What kind of media I see it right here. What are the I look at you. You're all the worst. Worst. This is not worst. This is. Chini. Chini. What? <laughs> oh, what's that? The new guy with the braids? Lil Yachty? Lil Yachty? <laughs> Why do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> How do you know? I'm sorry, but it's embarrassing. Oh my god. We gotta keep ourselves more accountable, yeah? Our phone is easy to hide because now you have your phones, but why don't you take it off and drop it? You know what? It's not. Chase God. If you run from Eucalyptus, 
then run towards the cross. I like that. We take that so, like, for granted. I, I think we take stuff like that for, for, for granted. I would rather be ch caught chasing God. I'm going to keep chasing, saying this kind of stuff. I'd be rather caught chasing God than chasing some tail. Hmm. Amen? Yeah. I'd be rather caught chasing God than looking at something I'm not supposed to be looking at. I'd be rather, rather caught chasing God than, than being unfaithful to my wife. Right? First one is righteousness. When you pursue righteousness, you live a life that pleases God. How many want to please God? Amen, amen. Did you know that? I'm going to have to tell you guys something. Let me, let me tell you a big secret. No, it's not really a secret. This is actually pretty true. Sin is pleasurable. Did you know that naturally, your bodies, it likes sin? No, 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 no. It's scripture. It's scripture. You like sin. It feels good. But watch this. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. Okay. I can't read that. Just to let you know I'm blind. Five minutes? Is that what I got? Okay. Okay. Watch this. I read, uh, uh, choosing rather to suffer affliction with pe the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. There's pleasure in sin. But let me tell you something, it only lasts a season. Okay? Okay, I gotta move on, I gotta move on. The second one is faith. Pursue faith. You know what? For some reason, I know that if some, some of you that are in here, if someone were to tell you and start bringing some facts to you and say, you know what, God is faith, and this is, these are the facts that I bring. There's some of you in here that will be persuaded otherwise. They'll be like, okay, you're right, God's, God's faith. Because you know why? You haven't been pursuing faith. You haven't been diving in the Word of God. You haven't, you haven't been pursuing Him. And God's not real to you. So, a way that we can overcome any of this stuff is to start pursuing faith, pursuing God, and diving into the Word of God. Amen? I'm trying. I gotta move on. I gotta move on. Pursue love. Pursue real love. Not, 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 not fake love. That's, that's presented to you, not this love that people think it is. I'm talking about real love, Lord, love towards God and loving others. That's the model of our church, to love others, right? To love the people, right? Number four, peace. Like I said before, you, you need to be pursuing peace. You can't, you can't be, catch me outside, girl. Catch me outside, how about that? Catch me outside, how about that? I can't believe this, girl. I like the new Dr. Phil that came out about her. It's not her, it's actually the mom that they're going after this time because yeah. the mom's the one enabling, praise God. And that's really where it's coming from. You can tell she's the one with attitude. Right. Anyways, <laughs> the fifth one is companionship of those who follow the Lord. Listen, I know, look to the left and right of you. Look to the left and right of you. I know you know some Christian people, okay? But that's not what this is talking about. Okay, yeah, I know some people from No Limits. That's cool. That's cool. That's you know them. But just because you know them doesn't mean that's going to help you in pursuing God. You need to hook up with someone. I'm not hook up like I'm not hook up with God. I mean, you need to be you need to befriend someone that's actually going to help you pursue God. That's actually going to hold you accountable to pursue God. You can't just really just, oh yeah, I know them, I know no limits, yeah, that's cool. No, you have to actually, you know what? I think Jasmine, very good friend. Hook up with her. Layla, very good friend. This whole front row actually probably, because they're all A students right here. And this second row, because they couldn't fit, but it's cool. <laughs> this second row right here, too. <laughs> and all the rest of you, don't worry. This front row right here, these are good guys right here, all these guys. You guys should be hooking up with them. Just because. They serve in a worship team doesn't mean they're all that. I'm trying to say that. Find someone that's going to really help you follow Christ. Amen? I'm going to end it with this. I'm going to end it with this. I need each one of you guys to start to check your life. Just, just think about your life. And let me present this to you really quick. Let me present this to you real quick. And this is how I'm going to get out of the call. Check out my hand right here. You see this? 
There's a sequence in the Christmas prayer. There's a sequence. Redemption, where you realize that what Jesus did on the cross for you, okay? How many love what Jesus did on the cross for you? Okay? The second one is righteousness. What we talked about right here, pure, being living pure and all that stuff, that's seeking righteousness. And the Bible tells us to seek God and His righteousness. Seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. The third one is worship. Worship and service. So, there's a sequence. One, two, three. If you're not saved, then we go on to the next one, righteousness. Then we go on to the worship and service. Here's the question that I need to ask you. And, and, and I have to tell you, we can't talk about worship and service until you talk about righteousness. And we can't talk about righteousness until we talk about you actually being saved. So my question to you is right now, are you worshiping the service? I mean, are you worshiping and serving God? That's the ultimate thing that we want to get you. If that were true, I'd see 100% of people worshiping when their worship song is on in this room. Right. Let me say that again. If you guys are worshiping and serving, I see 100% of people not sitting down, worshiping, really worshiping. This is where you want to be. We just talk about righteousness, becoming right with God, or living a life pleasing to God. Is your life there at all? If it's not there, it's because you haven't really experienced what God did on the cross for you. Pastor Dan, they ask the question, why do you serve God? That's a good answer. He said, because God told me. Where's the, where's the worship leader? Where's she at? Is she talk? Yeah. She's over there. Why do you why do you why do you worship? Why do you worship? Come over here. Why do you worship? Why do you need worship? Because God changed your life. Because God changed your life. Now, let's all stand. I can't.
people right now just to come up here. Just to come up here. Leave your seat. This subject of lust is not going to take one, one day. You're redeemed. You understand? You're redeemed. You're forgiven. You're forgiven. You're forgiven. When you make a step like this,